day. Do we have visitors today? This is your first time to step into this sanctuary. Any visitor that we have, please lift up your hand. We just want to appreciate you. Come on, let's celebrate our visitors. Glory to God. I want you to know we appreciate you. You're most welcome to Express Worship Center. And uh, God is going to bless you. And we also welcome our online our viewers that are watching us from come on give them a God bless you hand clap offering glory to God we love you and now let's bless the beautiful future apostles and prophets bankers and first ladies and presidents members of parliament Father, we thank you for the seed that you've given us in the house. Children are a heritage from you. And happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They will speak with the enemies at the gate. So, Father, we bless our children. Today's Thanksgiving, we thank you. We just want to say thank you, Lord for blessing us with wonderful children. And we thank you for increase in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding over their lives. We enforce divine protection. Watch over them all the days of their lives and let them serve you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sunday school teachers. Wow, what an awesome day that the Lord has given us. We had a wonderful first service. It was so powerful. And we know that the second service is going to be more powerful. I want to, uh, first of all, thank the Lord for bringing back our pastor, beloved Pastor Eunice. That's not the way we celebrate our pastors. Amen, amen. Pastor Eunice, um, you know, she underwent a, 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 a procedure and we thank the Lord that God has totally healed her. She's well in the name of Jesus. And uh, I also want to thank God for uh, a, a great man of God who has visited us all the way from uh, the nation of Nigeria. He was here, I think, last month. Our brother Duke, uh, please stand up and wave to us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, he's all the way from Nigeria and he's a businessman that God is using in our continent. And we thank God for them. So, uh, today is uh, Thanksgiving. And I just want to take this time, first of all, to thank the Lord for the people that have ministered to us the whole year. Our pastors, uh, God bless you so much. I want you to know that we really appreciate you for the great work that you have done. And of course, the preaching team. There are people who have been preaching to us the entire year. God greatly bless you. Let's celebrate them. We celebrate the worship team and the instrumentalists for the great work. You know, there was a time we had a keyboard, but we didn't have anybody to play the keyboard. And that went on for a long time, you know. So I don't take it for granted that God has given us it, and there was a time I used to lead worship also. Just imagine, praise the Lord. Uh, that time, uh, then we had uh, a time Sister Josephine used to lead worship. Then I could lead, and I, I think I used to sing. I had two songs. Kibonge cha Yesu. We conquered devils. We didn't have a worship team. Now we have a worship team. We can't take that for granted. <laughs> we thank God for the ashes the hospitality team, the media team. 
These are people who have given themselves. They are here early in the morning, first service, second service. You come in here, they usher you in, they show you where to sit as an executive. Though some of you reject where you are told to sit. The ushers here are full of the Holy Ghost. So if they tell you to sit somewhere, it's because they have discernment. That is where the power of God is going to meet with you. Amen. So we thank the pastors, the media, I, I mean the ushers. The media team today, I want to say I, I really appreciate you. I've always been in confrontation with you. Uh, but you've done a great work. Uh, you know, this man called uh, Brother Victor Mwanguzi, uh, you know, every time I meet with him, I'm always roasting him because I want our quality to improve. But do you know that during the whole COVID situation when you could not come to church, uh, Victor was the one streaming for you to be able to watch the service and the others, uh, Mercy and the young people. We appreciate all your work, the intercessors that are battling with demons that don't reach you because they are stopping them before they get to you, the protocol team, the sanctuary keepers, the youth leadership and the youths, the teen leaders and the teens, the Sunday school teachers, you know, they don't attend service. They take care of your children, our children, so that you can be here. The sound team, the ladies of virtue, the men of Vela, and all the disciples that are here today. I don't take it for granted that you're here. And of course, our online viewers, we have permanent members online that watch us. They attend every service and they comment. Oh, they comment so much. You know, they, they, you hear their amens coming through comments. Some of us watch, we never say amen. We never write anything. We are silent. We are in service. We are silent. We are online. We are silent. But there are people online who have the gold medal. I mean, they really, God bless you. I really appreciate you. We want to get to the word of God uh, very quickly. Thanksgiving Sunday. We are here to thank the Lord for the great things that he's done in our lives. So why is Thanksgiving important? You know, thanksgiving is a powerful spiritual truth. Point number one, thanksgiving is the master key to gaining access to the presence of God. Psalms 95 verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. The Bible is not saying that let us come. It's getting hot here. I need to remove this jacket. Thank you. The Bible is not saying that let us come with prayer. I mean with intercession with the supplication or with the repentance to the presence of God. Because you see, the spiritual realm is unlocked by spiritual truths. And you have to understand every spiritual truth that you know and you practice and locks it is a key when Jesus told Simon Peter that I give you the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven he did not give them him physical keys it was revelational knowledge that he was giving him so let us come before his presence with the thanksgiving Child of God, it is possible for you to, for God to take care. God can provide, he can, he can take care of your bills, give you houses, give you cars, but you don't have access to his presence. And that kind of blessing brings sorrow to your life. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord enriches and it addeth no sorrow. 
Because money, houses, cars, and wealth cannot bring fulfillment to your life without the presence of God. When you read in the book of, um, in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, 2 uh, Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24, the Bible says, And the king said, Let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. David's son had killed his brother Amnon and he flee uh, to, you know, to, to, to another country and through the intercession of Joab, his military commander, uh, the son was restored back. But David made a statement. When, 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 when Absalom was restored back, he was given the house. He was given the chariots. He was given everything that pertained to a king's son. But there was one thing that he was denied that caused the sorrow in the heart of Absalom. And what was that? It was the face of David. He could not see the face of David. And uh, uh, Absalom was sorrowful to the point that he even had to go and burn the barley, the garden of, uh, of Joab in order to get attention because he wanted to see the face of his father. Child of God, God can provide for you material things, but you don't have access to his presence because you are not thankful and that kind of blessing is going to bring sorrow. You have, the, you, you have the riches, but you are always sick. You know? You have the marriage, but you are always in conflict. You have the job, but it is always warfare. Without the presence of God, we cannot have fulfillment in our lives. And so, if we want to access His presence, the key that unlocks that is being thankful of what God has done in your life. Psalms 100 and, uh, and verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Heaven has gates and those gates are spiritual gates. They are real. The Bible says that the realm of the spirit you know, what we don't see with our naked eyes because we see it with our spiritual eyes is more real than what we see with our physical eyes. You want the, the gates of heaven to open? You have to be thankful. Not only the gates of heaven, but also the gates of your heart because your heart has gates. That's why Jesus says that I am knocking on the door of your heart. And that's the reason why you see that people who are thankful are always joyful. People who appreciate, they live a life of joy. Why? Because the gates of their hearts are always open. But people are always complaining and grumbling. You know, they look sad. Have you met people that seem to have everything that you admire in life, but they look sad? They are full of sorrow. Because of lack of thanksgiving. Secondly, thanksgiving means that without God, you can do nothing. Absolutely, you can do nothing. You know, you, you give thanks to God because you acknowledge where I am today, it has taken the finger of God. You know, on my own, Jesus made it so clear that without me, you can do nothing. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. So when you come to thank God, what you are acknowledging is, was it not for the Lord, I would not be where I am today. Child of God, let me tell you, if God decides for you to be jobless all your years, it doesn't matter your qualification, you can be. If God decides that you should not even have five shillings for an entire year, you can work and look for the money and you will not have it. Because man can receive nothing. That is what John the Baptist said. When his disciples were saying, come on, you introduced to us the Messiah and everybody is following him. And he said, man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him by God. So, child of God, 
a, a heart of thanksgiving is an expression that on my own might, I cannot. You see, many of us here, and those who are watching online, if I ask you a question, how many of you have ever seen Jesus with you? You've had an encounter with the Lord. Not so many people. Whether in a dream or in a vision or physical appearance. How many of you have ever seen the hand of God? Many people have never seen the hand of God. You know, the Bible says that by a stretched out hand, God led Israel out of Egypt. A child of God, one thing that you cannot miss to notice in your life, though you have never seen the hand of God, is this. There is an invisible hand behind everything that is taking place in your life. You may not have seen it, but there is a force. Child of God, you just think that you and me just met. We just met out of our own ideas. Ah! No! There is an invisible hand. You cannot see it, but it is working. <laughs> Hallelujah! You cannot feel it, but it is working. Hey! Where you are working today, child of God, you, you may not, God may not have appeared to you and told you, I am Jesus Christ, I'm giving you the job. I am giving you the business. But if you analyze, when you did that interview, there were more people that were more qualified than you. But somehow, you entered that place. There is a hand that is working. You may not see it. You may not feel it. But that does not deny Job say, I do not feel him. I look for him. Behind me, I can't see him. Ahead of me, I can't see him. Besides him, me, I cannot see him. But one thing I know is I know that he knoweth the way that I shall take. Child of God, you just think that you just woke up and met that lady that you're married to or that man that you're married to. You just think that you used your wisdom. Out of 7.5 billion people, you connected with that lady? You just think it was your wisdom? There was an invisible hand. You can do nothing. You can do nothing. There, at times, some of you, you find your source at the right place, at the right time. But God has not told you. But there's just something that it pushes you to be there. You know when we say, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You just you think that every time the Holy Spirit is going to say, pam, 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 pam. Now go to Luthuri Avenue. Now go to Kuala Lumpur. Now go to Hong Kong. No, 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 no. He's inside you. And at times he leads you without you knowing. But you just find you're the right place. Brother Duke, you're not here by mistake. There is an invisible hand. You know, thanksgiving means I cannot do it. I cannot think how I met my wife of all women in Nairobi. Praise the Lord. All women in Nairobi. How did it happen that I met with her? God did not tell me, thus says the Lord today, as you leave your house, you're going to meet a lady and she'll be your wife. No. We were even going to South B. We are there at Afia going to climb the cars of South B. And a friend of mine prevails on me and says, no, 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 escort me to church. I want to go to jam. I want to go and see somebody. I say, no, we are late for the appointment. And he began to shout, you had to listen to me. And I did it for fear of embarrassment because he was shouting. But behold, I did not see that hand, but there was a hand lingering on my head. 
drawing me to my destiny. When I entered that church, I saw somebody coming, hallelujah. And this is the kind of figure that I had seen when I was praying. When I had not seen the face, when God showed me my wife, I didn't see the face, but I saw the figure. I knew my wife was not these sisters who are thin. Every time I saw those who are too thin, I said, God bless you. Tell your neighbor, on your own, you can do nothing. <laughs> Woo! There is a hand that is leading you, people of God. You, you, you can't see it, but it doesn't stop that hand from working. May that hand take you far. May that hand open doors for you. May 2021 be greater in the name of Jesus. Three. Thanksgiving is an acknowledgement of God's goodness. Psalms 107 verse 1. Okay, let's first read Psalms 107 verse, yeah, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. That is the nature of God. Child of God. God is good. And is good all the time. Eh? Somebody sang a song. God. Mungu yumema. Mungu yumema. Yumema. We used to sing that song in the 60s. Before many of you were born. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God, God, okay, God is good because you are good. Come on, talk to me. God is good because you are good. God is good because you are righteous. God is good because he has answered your prayers. God is good because he has blessed you, child of God, even when you were evil. And you know, some of you think that God began to work in your life when you got born again. No. When you thank God for your life, don't just thank God for what he has done in your life after you got born again. Even before you got born again, God was working. Some of us here, you were born in banana plantations. You didn't go to the hospital. Your mama didn't go to the hospital. She was cooking and she felt you were moving. And she went and pushed to you. Pow! But God ensured that because there was no doctor, there was nobody, he ensured that the umbilical cord could not coil around your neck. God is working. Somebody, somebody sang a song that what? That what, even if I don't feel it, uh, even if I don't, is, is doing what? Can you sing that? Can you, can you just sing it? Pa Pastor Patrick, j just, just give us some beats there. Even when I don't what? Let me have the online people sing. It seems the people here. <laughs> Please, people on the mic there. I mean, even if I don't feel it or I don't see it, God is working. Are we together? child of God, before you got born again, God was working. You know, there are many things that he protected you from. He took you to school. He gave you, he gave you brains. The hand of God has been working in your life. So, God is good all the time. Thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that God is good. The scriptures say that even when we were still sinners, he died for us. He loved us the way we were because his nature, he is a good God. And that nature doesn't change. He's not good sometimes and bad sometimes. That is, a, is eternal attribute. God is good. Is it, is it all? 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Even when see, even when don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. He never stops working. He, before you got born again, he used the wicked people to help you out. When I was young, I, I'll never forget. My mama was going back to the village. Her business had collapsed. I was in class three. And my mama called me and told me, my son, I'm going to the village, but I cannot go with you to the village. You know, I have been trying to look for people who can stay with you, but nobody is willing to stay with you. But this person is willing to stay with you. You are going to stay with this lady. She was called Irene. And Irene was a prostitute. And Irene took me up. I stayed with her. It was a small shack where we were living. But from that place, I went to school. My mom told me, if I take you to the village schools, you will never learn English. And the work you're going to do in the future, you need to know how to speak English. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need to know how to say, can you imagine? My mama was not born again. But there was a hand that was working. Don't I speak good English? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So the, the Lord used that woman, Irene. To take care of me. Of course, it was a very hard life for the years that I stayed with her. But God was, was working. And then there was no food. There was no food. I mean, her trade could not bring in enough for us to eat. But then there was a hotel there. It was, it was owned by somebody. And that this person was willing to give me food as long as I brought for them water. Now, when you look at it, you can see, oh my goodness, uh, oh, a child who is about nine years, you know, working in a hotel, bringing water, that was exploitation. But listen, God was working by bringing that water, we had food to eat. Because you know, you can look it from the negative side, but look at it from the positive side. Child of God, you have to acknowledge some of you could not be here. You've been so careless in the world, sleeping around. But God protected you from HIV. Even when you did not know him. Psalms 107 verse 21. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and for his wonderful deeds for mankind. Point number four, thanksgiving opens the door for more. First Samuel 124. When you thank God, it opens the door for God to give you more. First Samuel 124. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. This was not the requirement for people to bring, uh, you know, their children for dedication. But when Hannah received this child, she came back to the very altar that God had used to break the barrenness from her life. And she brought three cows. They were not cows. They were bullocks. A bullock goes for something like maybe 80,000. That's about 240. And one of it was given as a burnt offering for the consecration of Samuel. But you know what happened by that act? 
because she was thankful. She came back and did not only give the bullocks, but also gave the son back to God. She had a heart of gratitude. You know, many people have the mentality of Rachel. Rachel was a person who was very ungrateful. She was also barren. And uh, God finally remembered her and gave her a child. And you know what she named that, uh, that child? She named the child Joseph. And what does Joseph mean? The Lord will give me more. You have just gotten a child. Instead of giving that child a name like praise, Sifar, thanks to God. The name is I want more. That's why she could only have two and even the second one, she died. She was not thankful. You've just gotten a job. You've just begun a business. Instead of thanking God and telling the Lord, Lord, thank you for giving me this job. They are paying me less, but I think you have something. You're saying, Lord, I want a promotion. That kind of attitude does not bring a multiplication. What happened to Hannah. Look at First Samuel chapter 2 verse 5. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread and they that they were hungry seized so that the barren has born seven and she has many children is waxed feeble. Because she had a heart of gratitude. God gave her more six children. Hannah altogether had seven. She overtook Penina, who had given birth earlier, because she was not thankful. And that's why she says that the one who was fruitful is now waxed feeble, because she overtook her. Child of God, may God multiply. May the Lord multiply the works of your hands. May the Lord multiply you. May he increase you on every side. Hallelujah. As you thank it is the same thing. I, oh my goodness. I have educated many children. I'm still educating many children. Take them to school. But there are people that you help. And you will never see them again. I was discussing somebody with Pastor Hannah yesterday. This young man. I got him from the street. Got, it, got him to school. We did everything. I mean people. But you will never hear anything until there is a problem. Is when you get that call. Once the problem is solved, let's meet again. <laughs> so, I mean, even if you tell me your problem, really, I am not greater than God. Because if you have that kind of attitude, you will not keep on going back to God and get answers. You have to thank God. Eh? And let me, let me tell you people, you don't thank God because people treated you well. There is no way where you're going to live. Anyway, some of you grew up with your parents. You never had, some of us went through the hands of so many people. And at times it was difficult. It was so challenging. But listen, I made a decision, I can tell you. All the people that I stayed with, I edited out all the shortcomings. And I always focus on the good. Because God used them at that time. You don't thank God because everything moved well in your life. But you thank God because you focus on the good things. People that forget people that helped them, they can never go far. I was praying last December in my office there in town. And I, I was just, the spirit of the, I began to thank God and I was crying and crying. And the Lord spoke, I thank, I thank God for so many people. Because I, was, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. You need to thank God for using so and so. Because God had to use somebody. And the Lord spoke to me. 
You need to thank. God brought me a movie of my former headmaster. How this man helped me. And uh, I began to thank God for this headmaster. When I was at school, I was having some struggles. And the headmaster decided that because you're a head boy, you're going to pay half. From today, we are putting a policy that head prefects in this school are going to pay half of the fees. When I finished my A-levels, the same headmaster said, wow, how did we make such a mistake? The head prefect is just a student. They have to pay full school fees. God changed the law for my sake. He changed it, he reversed it for my sake. But listen, God reminded me that. And I called Uganda, I called one sister to ask, I mean, can, you, can I get the number of my former headmaster? Could you be? And she said, I'm going to get it. She got it to me. I called the headmaster just to realize at that very time, the headmaster was supposed to go for, he's now retired, to go for an operation. And he needed money. They were raising money at, you know, to go for an operation of the heart. And I contributed. Even the wicked that God, don't just say, God, thank you. Tell God, thank you for using so and so. They were important in my life. Are we together? Okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving will make you whole. It will make you whole. Totally whole. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine that are not found that return to give glory to God? Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made the whole. Leprosy was, oh my goodness, if you had leprosy in Israel, you were rejected. You had to, you know, move with a bell. You, uh, uh, when you were coming, it was ringing, ding, 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 ding. And everybody along the way, they had to give way because someone of leprosy is coming and if you encountered a person with leprosy, you were going to be unclean. Because it was not treatable. This was one of the messianic miracles. Jesus meets the, uh, People can be so ungrateful. He meets these ten lepers. And he tells them, Go thy way. You are whole. And as they were going their, their way, because it happens by faith, they realize they are whole. Instead of thanking God, they went to their homes to celebrate. And only one came back. And Jesus asked a question, which is always asking concerning you and me. Were they not nine, ten that were made whole? Where are the others? That is a question that the Lord asks. Where is the so and so? I gave her a job. You mean she did not come back to thank me? I have protected you from COVID. You have encountered people that have COVID. And those droplets came upon you, but God protected you. Child of God, you are whole. Give the Lord praise for protecting you from COVID. forget the things that God has done in your life. I was in Moisbridge, I was in Kitale last week. I went to visit one of our churches 
uh, you know, I want to preach for Apostle Charles Biagon. And as we were going to Kitale, I mean, uh, we, uh, from Matunda, I felt in my spirit I need to visit the first church where I preached when I stepped on Kenyan soil. That was the first church. And so we got to Moise Bridge and we got inside there. Uh, we, we, we were with Joshua. But I, we could, I could not even remember the place because the place is now developed. Finally, we got somebody who directed us there. And we got to the church. When we got there, we met the pastor who is now running the church. The pastor who was there at that time was kicked out by the elders. It is dangerous to have elders that are not filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's why in next place worship center, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you cannot become an elder. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Otherwise, you can bring demons and disorganize us. The elders kicked out the pastor. Can you imagine? A man that was doing an amazing work. But listen, when I entered that church, can I have some of those photos? When I entered that church, I cried. I'm telling you. Because I remembered. I mean, I love going back to the past. Not to go back to the past to complain. But going back to the past to remember how far God has brought you. You know? When I entered that church, immediately I began to cry. I remembered... I came to that church with my, my brown shoe, uh, which was torn on this whole side. God has sent me to Kenya. You know, uh, that's not the church. Uh, bring the other photos uh, written on Moise Bridge. You know, God has sent me to Kenya. I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know where I'm going to stay. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get to Nairobi. This pastor received me. Not that one, not, not, not that photo, uh, where it is written, Moist Bridge. You know? And uh, at that time, I looked at this church, I said, oh my goodness, this is so prosperous. I cried on that day because when I look at where I am today and that day, the hand of God has been working. Praise the Lord. Th that church has gone through so much. Where we are today by the grace of God cannot be compared to where that church is. I looked at the flow. It has all fallen apart. The church broke down, broke down. They now have, the pastor was telling us, now there are 40 members. And I decided I'm going to do the what? I'm going to redo the flow of the entire church. Are we together? I mean, son of God, you, you have to, it is wickedness for you to forget the people that God used in your life and where God has brought you from. It is wickedness. It grieves the heart of God. Because God knows your beginning. He knows where you're coming from. You know, by the grace of God, I've traveled all over the world. Then I called the pastor. I met with him. We met at, uh, in Eldoret. And he told me what he has, he has gone through. Oh my goodness. I said, Lord, thank you. You've been faithful. People of God, Go and look at your photo albums. Are we together? <laughs> and look at the way you were looking. Some of you even had Kwashako and Marasmus. But look at you today, hallelujah. Those days that you thought you looked wow. But now you wonder, what, what was I doing? Can you bring the other photos? Today I've said I'm giving thanksgiving for the media team. Praise the Lord. So, 
That is the church inside. Now, bring the other Makuti church. I went to, you know, preach for Apostle Viegon. Apostle Viegon is my spiritual son. When I went to preach at, in Kitale, I remember he came to see me around 2008 or 2009 around there. We had just finished the Heaven's Fire Prayer Summit. And uh, I was standing behind at the city hall and he came and he spoke to me and said, God, has, uh, I, I, I've come from Kitale to see you. I've attended the summit. I've been blessed. But I want to come back and see you. I said, okay. He came back. He saw me. And he told me, you know, God has spoken to me. You are my spiritual father and all that kind of thing. I said, okay, that's great. And he invited me to go to Kitale. When I went there, we had like 10 or 11 people in the service. The, the church was so miserable. It was so poor. They had nothing absolutely. Actually, by the time they go to this, this was a very high level. <laughs> we had walked for some time to get to that level. But you know, I was just looking. Can you bring the, the next photo? You know, God pulled them from there and gave them that. <laughs> Glory to God. They built that church. We went there. The church had no people, dedicated it, prayed. I mean, the church kept on growing and growing. Now they have filled it, it is overflowing. And I went last week to dedicate a new piece of land that they have bought for expansion. God is working. That is the land. Praise the Lord. So, when I look at this ministry, where we were 20 years ago and where we are, I mean, you cannot forget what the Lord has done in the past. And, child of God, let me tell you. So, this man came to Jesus and he bowed down and he was a Samaritan. It appears that the other nine, they were Jews, but they never appreciated. You know, what is leprosy? Leprosy is salvation. Child of God, the mere fact that you are born again, because leprosy is sin. So when you accepted Christ as your personal savior, the garment of sin was removed away from your life. The mere fact that you are born again is more than a miracle that is enough for you to thank the Lord. There are many people that are going through what you're going through and they have entered into depression. They have committed suicide. But you've gone through it and you've not committed suicide. You're coming out more powerful and more stronger with the testimonies and more anointed. You can't take that for granted. And Jesus told that man, because you came back, to give thanks unto God, thy faith has made thee whole. The other people only received the one miracle. It was the miracle of leprosy. But this guy was made whole in every area. Financially, he was made whole. Materially, he was made whole. His work with the Lord was made whole. May the Lord visit other areas of your life. Not just one area. Hallelujah. That's what Thanksgiving does. That's why the scriptures say that be careful for nothing. But in everything, with the prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And people of God, the Bible didn't say thanks saying. It says thanksgiving. Which means you have to give. You have to give to thank the Lord. Not to tell the Lord, oh Lord, thank you a million times. Oh, oh you've done it wonders. That is thanks saying. It is not thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, you have to give. That is a game changer that makes the American nation to be a superpower because it is the only nation on planet Earth that has put aside a day in November to give God thanks for what he has done. And that is why America is a superpower. Let me finish by saying this. You know, child of God, many of us, we have this kind of thought why people don't give thanksgiving. People feel, not everybody, but as somebody, and at times I also feel like that. <laughs> you people, at times I can preach to you, preach to you, preach to you, encourage you, you are shouting, wow, power. 
I've seen God do incredible miracles. And then after you finish to preach, you go back to the office and you say, oh God, you've done it for others. What about me? How many of you have times felt like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, God is, wow, you've healed others. What about me? I have this situation in my life, you know? Thanksgiving is an attitude. You don't give, I mean, you don't give thanks because things are moving well in your life. No! It is a decision that you make up. You know, you go back home and you lay down on the bed and you feel, oh my goodness, where is God? <laughs> I slept in the overnight prayer meeting the whole night. I was calling upon heaven and I was calling upon fire. But where is God in this situation? Do I have some witnesses here? Come on. I know you meet with Jesus every day. How many of you at times you felt, where is God? Has that thought come to you? And you've been preaching. You've been praying, mama, 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 encouraging people. God is there. He will never leave you. Oh, cling on him. Oh, oh, oh. Then you go back to the office. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where is God? It's a decision you make up. I'm going to thank God. It's not by the way that I feel. And you know, some of us think that Mm, I can't thank God because there's not, nothing that has happened in my life. People are fighting me. People are not grateful. I'm working hard at my place of work. So and so was supposed to marry me. They rejected me. How can I give thanks in such a situation? Mm, thank me to God that that guy never married you because he was going to become a hammer in your life. He was going to be a troublemaker. God saw that he doesn't qualify. So he put him out of your life. Thank God that he's out of your life. A better person is coming. You know, I went to the American embassy four times to get a visa to go to the U.S. And they denied me. Pop. One day I even prayed. I said, Lord, when I appear to the embassy, I don't want any questions. I pray for the consular. When I put my head there, let the fire come upon him. He will not ask any question. He will just give me the visa. And I went to the embassy. I decided for three days, I'm not even taking saliva. <laughs> we prayed with my wife. I was closed in the, in the bedroom. Zaga, zaga. Zaga, zaga, not come by that time. There were some other things. Visa. Rrr, visa. Hey, I went to the embassy. Surely, the lady did not ask me any question. She just said, visa denied. <laughs> and you know, you come back, you say, God has sent me to go to the U.S. These Americans are not giving me visas. They are trying to stop me. They are trying to step on me. Just like some of you, you're saying, God has anointed me, but I'm not being given an opportunity. Hmm? I am working so hard at the place of work, but my workmates and my boss is fighting against me. They are stepping against me. Some of you have even been sacked from your place of work. Child of God, let me tell you, it doesn't matter who sucked you, God permitted it. Thank God, God was behind it. Because there is a better opportunity that God is opening up for you. Are we together? It is the hand of God working. It's not the devil. At times we exalt the devil so much. It is not the devil. It is the hand of God. But listen, child of God, there comes a time when things have to change. I was reading the story of Michael Jordan. 
Michael Jordan was playing basketball when he was in college and he wanted to join the basketball team and the coach said, you cannot make it. You are not fit. You know your height and your size. You can never play basketball. He never gave up. While they were playing, he was watching. When they went to sleep at night, he was practicing. Pooh! Playing alone and encouraging himself alone on the court. Child of God, let me tell you. A time comes in your life when nobody can stop you. You can no longer be hidden. You can no longer be stepped on. You grow in stature. Hallelujah. You cannot. A time came when my time to go to the U.S. came. When I went to the embassy, I could not be stopped. I was interviewed for one minute and I got my visa. Greatness cannot be buried. The greatness that is inside of you, nobody can bury it. No man can completely keep you down. Oh my goodness. They can use this way, but God will come through this way. Because you cannot bury the greatness that is inside of you. A time comes when you can no longer be hidden. When that has to happen to you, you have to manifest. Are we together? As people are fighting you, they are closing doors against you, stay in the presence of God. Seek the Lord. Continue building the stature inside of you. That stature will finally explode. You cannot stop. No man, no man can stop your rising. They tried to do it with Joseph. They sold him. They said, here comes the dreamer. We are going to sell him. They sold him. When he arrived there, he was a houseboy. As a houseboy, he had no opportunity. He was just in the house. Then the devil moved him from there and locked him up in prison. But my dear, both Joseph was in prison for two years. Nothing was happening, but the greatness was growing. It was growing. It was growing. And a time came when that greatness could not be hidden. Marco Samakataya. Even the people that knew that he was so powerful could not give him connections. He interpreted his, the, their dream, but they shut up. They refused to recommend him. Child of God, it doesn't matter who refuses to recommend you. Some people pretend that they don't know you. They pretend that they don't know the potential that you carry. They pretend that they don't know that you are good enough for that job. It doesn't matter. Hakuna mutu anaweza kukukalia. Hakuna mutu atazuia baraka yenye mungu analeta kwa maisha yako. What God has ordained, the stature is growing. Touch yourself and say, I am growing. Come and say, my stature is growing. Hallelujah. You cannot block a great man. You cannot block a great woman. You will block this way. He will come out through this way. You will block this way. He will come out through this way. You will stop him here. He will come out the home. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can block you. Exploits Worship Center, I can assure you, we are seeking the Lord. Nobody's going to block us. We are going to take the city. We are going to have impact. A time is coming when the greatness can no longer be hidden. Touch yourself and declare. Say, hey, Julia Subi, nobody can hide you. Nobody can forever frustrate you. Hallelujah. Nobody, nobody. They can do what they want to do. They can say and say and talk. Oh, she's wicked. She's going nowhere. She looks, I don't know, like what. But don't mind. The stature is growing. Zamaka Bosata. The greatness is growing inside of you. Zabagadia, Bagadia. The Bible says 
the Bible says, and the mother of Moses hid Moses for three months, but a time came when she could no longer, Micaiah, she could no longer hide her son. I prophesy to somebody here, you shall no longer be hidden. You shall no longer be hidden. People have hidden you. People have stepped on you. And the Lord says the hour of manifestation has come. The three months are over. The three years are over. The 30 years are over. You can no longer be hidden in the house. You can no longer be hidden in the bedroom. You have come of age. Zaga, zaga, zaga. You have come. Makabo Sete, you have come of age. Oh my God, that is your prophetic word. Whatever was hiding you is living today. In the name of Jesus, it is time for you to be seen. It is time for your manifestation. It is time for you to enter those doors because you have grown in stature every man that was standing against you they are being overturned so that you can enter somebody say i am entering i am entering enter 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 Makabosetea. enter enter they are fought you joseph they are fought you, Joseph. They are fought you, Moses. But the hour has come. You can no longer be hidden. Makabo seketea. Zamayande rebesetea. Roshamayanda rabayateza. Re makabo seterebeyanda. The Lord is coming from another direction. The Lord is coming from another way that the enemy did not expect. Even the people online, I can tell you, there's something that is lifting. There's something that is lifting. There's something that is living. You shall no longer be suppressed. You shall no longer be hidden. Wale waliyo kukalia, wana kuwacha sasa. Wana ondoka sasa. Child of God. You cannot. Michael Jordan, they sat on him. They said he cannot make it. He cannot play. He became the greatest basketball player that changed the NBA in America by just one game that God opened the door and he came in as a substitute. My goodness, God had been preparing him and that was the game changer. Those who thought that you are a substitute, they're going to be shocked. I prophesy over your life, 2021 is your year of manifestation. It's your year to be seen. You will not be hidden. The Lord spoke to us on Friday and he said that uh, uh, it's, we are going to enter into high places. He released the high places anointing. Those are your two prophetic words even as we enter into 2021. God is making you to ride in the high places and whatever was stopping you to ride in the high places has been removed today for manifestation in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and thank God, thank God, thank God. Come on, just thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him for what he has done in your life. Thank him for the miracles. Makabo Zandaya. Rosha Makabo Zetea. Rema Shanda Ravagaran. Rosha Makabo Zaka. Thank him. Thank him for watching over you. Thank him for keeping you. Thank him for preserving you. Oh my God. Roshama Kabozanda. Masanda Bakata Rabasanda. Thank him, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Makamozanda. Roshama Kabozanda. 
Mare Cabo Seke Brick and I. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. You've done so much for me. Everything that he has done. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are nine people here. The enemy had, you know, it was like you were hidden. But I am seeing that hand just living like that. And the Lord says, Now. You are ready. Previously, you were not ready. But now you are ready. And I release you, nine of you right now, in the name of Jesus. You were not ready before, but now you are ready for the next level. I release you right now to enter into that level in the mighty name of Jesus. Makosa kabo sanda rabayandos, marosha makabo zagadai, rema rosha kabo zagades. There is a reshuffle that is taking place in your company. In the next 21 days, there is a reshuffle that is happening, and that reshuffle that is happening is is positioning you. 
to take over that seat that you admired but everybody had fought you in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you, you've been preaching and sharing the word of God. There's been no much manifestation. The Lord says, I've been preparing and working on your inside. Now, this is the time of your showing. The Lord is telling me to tell you, when the, Jesus was born, he went to Egypt. He was hidden in Egypt. But a time came when God, Abba, Father, called him out of Egypt. And, you know, when he came back, the scripture says, because Herod had died, the Lord is telling me to prophesy upon people here, that Herod that has been fighting you today has been overturned. Even those of you who are watching online, that Herod, that was your persecutor, that wanted you finished, has been overturned today. Now you can go back and have peace. Now you can go back and leave. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I release the power of God. I see five people here. Even that lady who is putting on pinkish something there. The Lord is touching you. That Herod has been overturned in the mighty name of Jesus. I see somebody at the back there putting on blue skirt. The Lord would say to you that Herod has been overturned in the mighty name of Jesus. Marosha, Makabozaga, Diga, 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 Diga. Romos of that gentleman putting on purple. Oh my goodness. It is, <clears throat> it is happening all over the place in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand. Mm. Let's take our seats. Now, if you know that you came to this service today and you're not born again, you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior and you want to get born again, lift up your hand. Anybody? You're not born again and you want to accept Christ as your personal Savior. Anybody? Is everybody born again? Glory to God. Now, as we give our Thanksgiving offerings, I want to remind you that um, two Sundays ago, we gave our pledges for buying land for the church. Amen. And uh, please, I want you to know that our mind is very open. You know, uh, we are negotiating with Karen, but if another opportunity, because there's another land that opened up there around in Mara Daima, uh, you know, we are also getting in touch with the with the owners of that land uh, to see what is the best deal for us. So, uh, those of us who did not pledge last Sunday, uh, maybe you are not here, or those of you who are online and you really want to be part of this, I just want to give you an opportunity. You can lift up your hands if you want to, you know, to pledge towards the land. You are not here. Uh, anybody, you know, we all need to participate uh, you were not here and you want to participate in that, lift up your hand and the ushers are going to give you an envelope and you can write there what you want to give. God bless you. Those of you who are taking the envelopes. We are believing God for 270 million Kenya shillings to buy the land for the Lord so that we can build the house. Whether God decides to give us the whole of this patch of land, he knows, praise the Lord. I know that God is leading us and is guiding us. So everybody be part of that. And uh, a friend of mine one time told me that every time God wants to bless people in the congregation, he's going to give them his own burden, his own assignment. And uh, when they respond to that, God is going to bless them. When we were putting up this structure, Many people that were stuck, who participated in putting up this place, this temporary uh, structure where we are, God blessed them with amazing jobs. I know that, I know that he's going to do that uh, also for you as you participate in that. Okay, so you write, uh, you write uh, you know, what you want to give, what the Lord has put in your heart. You write it on the envelope, and uh, we're going to pray uh, that the Lord will give you the ability you know, you have to have faith. Don't pledge according to your ability. You know? Those of you who have brought your tithe, uh, please come over here. 
I want to declare Titus blessing over your life. All of us, let us prepare our offerings to give to the Lord and your thanksgiving uh, offering. Uh, do I have tithers here today? Okay, lift up your tithes. Even those of you who are giving by empress and so on, and let us declare in the mighty name of Jesus, say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for removing me from the land of lack and bringing me in the land of abundance. I bring my tithe to you, King Jesus. Look upon me from thy holy habitation where you dwell in heaven and bless me. Devil, you have no power over my finances because I'm a tither. This is my insurance against the devourer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give your tithe. Let's get our offerings. Okay. The people in the middle here, please, you can bring your offerings. And those who are seated here, you can bring. Yes. 